Welcome to the Deerfield Arts Bank. I'm Jane Treger, and we are going to continue our conversation with local artists. Um, at the Arts Bank, currently, we have an exhibit called Small Art for Big Holidays, and, uh, and the exhibits change on a regular basis. Our, what is behind us is what is normally behind us, and it changes, but the guests also change. And today we have Margaret Humbert Draws. Margaret, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm going, I hope you'll be happy at the end after I've quizzed you on all these different questions I have for you. First yeah. of all, when I first met you, I noticed, of course, um, an interesting accent. So I asked you, where are you from? So would you tell us where you're from? Well, I, I was born in England a long time ago, and uh, then after the Second World War, my whole family moved to Geneva, Switzerland. So I grew up in Switzerland and spent most of my life there. So uh, I guess the accent is sort of English, though in England they wouldn't recognize it as such. I'm, they call it Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic? <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And why Mid-Atlantic? Well, in the middle of the Atlantic, halfway between. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> That's oh, the way the British see it. I see, mid-Atlantic. I, th I, I never thought about what that actually meant. So, but you did actually spend some time in the United States. Yes, I did. I went to college for two years in the Midwest and uh, tried to pick up an American accent there. And I think you failed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's... Uh, I, I speak the way I speak, even though I've been here for several years now. <laughs> Again, yes. I come back. Well, I met you at, um, at I think, our, our second exhibit here. That's you, right. You, you, yeah. you were part of that exhibit, which was um, yes. uh, Works on Paper. Exactly, yes. And the piece that, um, I think, right there in the center here, that piece is the piece that uh, one of the three pieces we put in that exhibit. Yes, and I was so pleased that that uh, it had been recognized as being of interest, and uh, because it was one of my most recent ventures, uh, I had decided I was going to work with paper and uh, try to make the paper stand out or be three dimensional, and. Um, just explored what would happen if I slit it with a knife and twisted the paper, and it took on these wonderful shapes. There are two different qualities of paper there, right? Yes, there's a there's a, a lightweight Bristol, which is relatively stiff, and then a vellum, which is translucent paper. So it gives a a, a quality where you're not quite sure what you're looking at, whether it's a shadow or whether it's something actually some kind of substantial material there. So I think that's a very accurate, fair description. That's exactly <laughs> how I feel when I look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's go back a little bit in, 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 in um, chronology. In chronology. <laughs> what brought you to this particular area from the Midwest? Um, well, I didn't come here directly at all. Um, the mid from the Midwest, I went back to Switzerland, and I spent well, most of my uh, younger adult life there when I was working. But what brought me back to the United States, that was in 1999, was my children who had grown up in Switzerland um, and had both decided to move to New York. They were both artists. And uh, it seemed to make sense to, once I'd retired, to go and live near them. And they didn't seem to object. So I moved back to, <laughs> to the United States then. Uh, then spent some time briefly in the Catskills, and then my daughter decided to move out of New York City with her family and, and two young children uh, to Northampton. And I came and took one look at Northampton and decided that's where I really wanted to live. Now, you know we are in South Deerfield today. We are in South Deerfield yes. today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also a New Yorker who's moved here with a long, funny journey like yours, and I I think it's a beautiful place we live here. Yes, it is. It is. We're very fortunate. Yes. So now, you said you retired. Can you give us a little bit of the story of your... When did you become... Oh, let's do it this way. When did you become an artist? Or have you always been an artist? <laughs> um, 
I've always been interested in, in artistic things, in, in art in general, and never really felt I had that much confidence to call myself an artist. But during my work life, my wage, salary earning working life, um, I was involved on the fringes of the textile business, the textile industry. And um, that's a very funny image, the fringes of the textile <laughs> industry. Yeah, I didn't do that on purpose, but no, no. <laughs> it's a good part. But you weren't doing fringes. I wasn't not making I fringes. See, okay. I, was, I was helping to sell man-made fibers. I worked for the DuPont company, and we were selling Orlon and Dacron and later Lycra, all of these textile fibers. And in order to do that, uh, the merchandising people um, were asked to uh, imagine what was going to happen in terms of fashion trends, colors, fabric textures, uh, fabric uh, lusters, looks, and so forth, and also the, to, to, to co combine that with the technical uh, aspects of, of making fabric, knitting or weaving. Or and what was your job in this? And my job there was to uh, pull together the, the ideas about fashion trends and to present them to the uh, textile industry to our, cl our customers in the industry and in order to do that you had to illustrate or give people an idea of the feeling of, uh, of what this trend was going to be. Let's say that fabrics are going to be going very drapey then one would show uh, images of misty uh, landscapes or something like that uh, and then introduce elements of color, pieces of fabric, um, Oh. In other words, create a, something which presented, which explained the atmosphere of, of what was going, to, what sh was coming in terms of fashion. Sounds to me like a very powerful position behind the scenes. Uh, well, you you propose, you don't actually, <laughs> you you. But you influence. You influence, yes, you influence. Mm. And I was not alone in in setting these trends. We, we you know, there were people uh, who were also experts in in this kind of business, but. Uh, the 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 process of putting together the technical story and the um, aesthetic story was sort of part of my job. So how did that h tell us how you leapt from there to making your own work? Well, um, I retired. <coughs> um, in fact, I was downsized, which is uh, at the time <laughs> seemed like a very nice thing to do because the world was changing a lot and the. Corporations were becoming much more bottom line oriented, and it wasn't really as much fun. <laughs> so I was happy to be able to retire early. Um, and after that, um, I explored what I could be doing with myself, and I began experimenting. And when I moved to New York uh, to be closer to my children, I met a woman who did a lot of dye painting on fabric. And I liked fabric, I loved fabric, and I liked to make pictures. And um, so I began to do that. I began to paint on fabric with dye and to make patterns. And Is this example light and color, this, this painted screen? Is that, is that yes, something so you that Yes, that was the beginning of my, or my interest, not only in passion, but what happens when light hits a hits color or hits layers of color and that particular piece was just a continuing layer of fabric which I could roll around two um, rods. And change the pattern. And change the pattern because there were two colors behind, the, the colors changed behind each other. And uh, it was great fun. I was had plans to How make big pieces but th that it didn't really go much further than that. After that I began pa painting on linen and so then you did the clothing. The clothing, yes. Uh -huh. So, um, so let's move on to another art. Right. But but always the same background. What what so you started? We have behind us some pieces that are current. Yes. So, uh, take us from those those uh, those painted uh, dyed painted silks, mm. to, to and linens to to next steps like well, like <coughs> like the black and white. Well, th then, uh, as you can see pr from the first ones, I was interested in pattern, not necessarily repeat pattern, but, but pattern. Uh, and also the, 
the way pattern uh, and light um, work together. So uh, I was working with, I was started cutting out paper uh, with a box cutter, <laughs> making cut patterns in, uh, in black paper and moving on from having the pattern continue from one square to the next, as you can see in this or just black and white one there. Um, and then uh, this experimentation continued on more transparent fabrics and more transparent materials. And then finally, I ended up deciding to go to something completely opaque. <laughs> and Is that this? Yes. And that I'd f I went online and found some very heavy industrial uh, felt. It's, uh, what is it used for? I don't quite know. It comes in big rolls. <laughs> uh -huh. It can be molded if it's uh, blended with plastic, but it, it looks was phenomenally wool. heavy. It, w it wasn't that heavy. It's, um, but the the what I did there is I just took those pieces, that this these big pieces of beige felt, and. Um, took my, my box cutter and began cutting out shapes. And just, you know, freehand cutting out shapes. And they, all, they always ended up being flowers. They always ended up being floral patterns, but that was fine. Uh, I just put them... That's not what we saw in the first, in the first uh, silk dyes. Those were more... Those were more... Geometric sort of patterns. They were yeah, geometric or, yes. And uh -huh. was, yeah. But somehow I gravitated towards these, these uh -huh. floral effects. Well, I, I see the direct connection between this and, and this. And this one there. Yeah. This is a current piece, right? This is a current piece. And this is just paper. Um, well, well, let's, before we get to the paper. So, but tell me about the screens. They're made out of wood, aren't they? Yes, it's bamboo ply, and it's a wonderful material. Um, it's very, very, uh, I worked with two, th two thickness. One was a sort of an eighth of an inch, and the other was a, a quarter inch. Uh, and I had to learn how to make computer pi files of my patterns in order for the bamboo to be cut by uh, an electronic machine, a CNC machine. And that took me six months. I had to <laughs> go, go to school at Greenfield Community College, and oh. I, learned how to, I learned how to make vector files. And oh my goodness, I find I, that so impressive. Uh, Look, we've just pulled in Greenfield Community <laughs> College <laughs> and their wonderful programs yeah, it in was a completely <laughs> unexpected way. So what is a CNC machine? I don't know what CNC stands for, but it's a machine that, that reads vector files, these particular, that particular type of, of computer file and cuts patterns. I mean, it, it just has a little, uh, like, like a drill that goes down, and, it, and in no time flat, it's cutting out these patterns, uh -huh. which would have taken me months to cut out by hand, and it's done in 15 minutes or something oh. like that. And uh, so that's how the screens were made. And are you still making these screens? I'm not making them anymore, um, partly because it cost me too much money <laughs> to make them. Oh. Um, but I'm still interested in, uh, in, in pattern. And this is, a, in a way, what brought me to the paper, which was the other extreme. I could cut that myself. I see. I didn't need a big machine, and I didn't need uh, electronics to do that. Right. And, uh, but you didn't go for the traditional paper cut, although um, the lamps, you have these lamps? Oh, the lanterns, those were lanterns, part of, sorry. yeah, they, they, were, they were also made on the CNC machine. Oh, they're wood as they're well. They're wood, yes, yes. I see. So, but you didn't go for traditional paper cut. No, no. I, I should in, interrupt here to say that the, our January show will be the art of paper cut. Mm -hmm. And Margaret, you will be in that show as well. But yours is very non-traditional. Whereas these other, some of these other artists will be actually having work that looks more like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so. Well, um. You did know about paper cut. I did know about paper cut. And what I loved about the, the traditional paper cut was sort of the silhouette effect, because yes. that has always been one of my fascinating silhouettes, uh, and light and shadow. And, um, and I thought, well, I don't, want, I don't know how to do that. But what I could experiment with 
is creating light and shadow in a different way. In other words, doing white on white, white paper on white paper, and just cutting out shapes and then twisting them and assembling them and making them into... Um, Much more sculptural. Sculptural, yes. Dimensional So we effects. have several examples here. And um, so did you start with the flowers? I started. Flowers to seem to be your... Yes, I started with the flowers um, and had a lot of fun doing that. And so the flowers and the leaves and even the backgrounds were... Um, were bent and sort of separated from the background uh, in order to uh, create a sense of depth or an illusion of, of depth. Um, and sometimes with the paper, here it's all white on white, uh, whereas in the, the other one there's a little bit of tint there and different papers so that you have a slightly different shade, this white off-white. Um, and also a vellum uh, paper involved as, as well. And then I thought, well, those are very, they're very decorative and they're very pretty, but I wanted to give myself some constraints. <laughs> In other words, not, not try to produce a recognizable figure or image, but to do abstract, something abstract. And I wanted to work with the paper in a slightly different way. So I began folding it and making pleated effects or slashing it. Like this one down here. This one down there, yes. Um, and What were your responses from people when they saw the, all of this work? They were intrigued, I think. I think that uh, a lot of people said, oh, I've never seen anything like that before, which was kind of exciting. <laughs> um, that's, I think that's probably what I said. But um, they was they were always, there was always some kind of response, some kind of interest. And, and what was interesting is how, especially with the abstracts, how people add their own image to uh -huh. the abstract. Um, the, the, the vertical the torn paper one on the top right there. Um, that one suggested forests to some people. They saw lots of trees. Um, or a waterfall. Or a waterfall. It could be. You see, you see something else. Right. <laughs> I, 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 see. I also see, more on a more practical level, that there are different colors, paper, different types of paper, different, different color white. Yes, yes. And, and then the, and the shadow work is beautiful. And so it's important how, how they, the, um, they, they change according to the way the, 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 the the piece is lit. Sometimes they have a, no, a tremendous amount of, of relief and dimension if you have side lighting on them and, and uh, in other kinds of lighting they, they look they different, it looks different so that the colors come out differently and that's also something that intrigued me is how, how in different settings the, these images work in a different way. Why couldn't you make the lanterns out of, out of some thick paper? instead of the wood. Would that make it easier to produce those? Uh, it would, yes. Um, I tried to make... Uh, actually, I didn't get around to doing that, but that's a good idea. Maybe I should do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe I could do that, yes. Because the lanterns were fun and they... they uh, I'd put them in the gallery. Uh, you would? I would. All right, well, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. So um, I'm looking through some of the other images that we have here. There, um, to me, it's a very logical um, chronology that you've just described. Wh what are you going to be doing next? <laughs> ah, so um, do you know? I'm experimenting with making much bigger pieces with the paper, and. Um, I think I know what I want to do, but I have to explore, and this is what is so fun about, so much fun about artwork, I suppose, in general. But for me, uh, with this whole process, is moving from one stage to to the next, uh, and finding out how to do it, 
and see whether anything works, and if it doesn't work, what alternatives there might be. Uh, it really is, um, it's a never-ending exploration, and sometimes unexpected things come out of it. And so I say I'm trying to look, work on bigger pieces, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe something else will happen. And, or maybe there'll be freestanding pieces. I don't know. I don't know. And I have a feeling that color is going to start creeping back. Color? Yes. You're missing the color? I don't really miss it, but I've found myself adding little bits of color here and uh -huh. there. And uh -huh. so, it, who knows? Color may reappear. We'll see. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, um, you said something that I thought was, I think, a very important. I, I don't know that I can recapture the whole sentence, but you, we were talking about the the, the cut, f the paper cut flowers, and you said something like. Um, it was decorative. Mm. And I thought how interesting that is, that we have this issue in art about it being the decorative arts yes. or the fine arts. Yes. And it's such, um, and you've just crossed the two in the same medium. Mm. And would you describe one as decorative arts and the other as fine arts? Well, I wouldn't, but but what, what, how did, you know, you, it was your sentence, and you, you no. were describing your work and your process, so... Well, that's an interesting question, because I think I have this prejudice, which comes from sort of the kind of education that one gets, <laughs> that there are the decorative arts, and then the more noble, fine arts. And um, uh, just to confess something goes way back when I was maybe in, er in my early teens, I took some painting classes. And, was uh, that the confession? That, uh, it's coming, it's coming, oh, the coming. <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming, it's coming. I was just wondering. <laughs> and, the, and the teacher <laughs> said to me, Margaret, you have a lot of facilité, I spoke French then, you, 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 you're yes. quite facile, I mean, you, you do these things quite cleverly, but you'll never be a fine artist. And this really rankled with me all year. I can imagine. So, um, I suppose there's some sort of childhood or teenage aspiration to be recognized as a fine artist, but that my tendencies tend to my inclination is towards the decorative, the, uh -huh. the, 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 the pleasing, the, the pretty. The pretty. <laughs> and these there's always this sort of back resonance saying, oh no, that's not good enough, you know, you have to be much more cerebral. And, uh, cerebral. Oh, but you did describe these non-figurative um, non ones as cerebral. As more, well, in that they, I had set myself particular constraints that it should be just white and it should not represent anything and that I was only going to be playing with light and shadow uh -huh. and that that was the exercise. And um, I do. I rather. I rather like the results. <laughs> I, quite I think I was about to say, I bet you took the words out from my mouth. I was about to say, I think you've succeeded at at, at fulfilling your your goal within your constraints. I think you did it really supremely well. Thank you. you Thank you've you. done it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting to uh, observe people's responses to, uh, to this work. I, I don't know whether this is appropriate, but I have some work up now in the senior center in... in uh, it's in absolutely Northam appropriate. Good. In which senior center? The senior in Northampton. And uh, people gravitate to these... The flowers. The flowers. And they're not quite sure about the more abstract pieces. They sort of saying, how did you do it? <laughs> But so I can see where um, things are, are perceived differently, and uh, and I'm happy when when there is interest in the more abstract ones um, because I feel those are perhaps more less approachable than the than the than the flower one. Well, I was thinking I was thinking about. Um, 
about wallpaper actually. Uh -huh. I was thinking about how people choose wallpaper. Yeah. And they how often how often does somebody choose very vibrant, colorful imagery like flowers or gardens or mm. I don't know what. But most wallpaper will lean different centuries had their preferences, of course, mm -hmm. different decades, towards something more neutral, yeah. something, right? Yeah. And um, so that, that there's something there, but it's not just it a plain white wall, right? Right, right. right? So there they see... And then they, some uh, people prefer having yes, a wall full having of flowers. Having a wall full of flowers, exactly. Right. And so uh, I suppose that the step is to recognize that that plain white wall or these white on white images are really inviting people to actually look very carefully to see what the light is doing to them and where the subtle Slow differences are. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing what you do. So I'm imagining these white on whites in very large formats, and I'm wondering how you're going to do that. Or I'm going to imagine something more colorful, and I look forward to being able to look at them and talk to you about those as well in the near future. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to finding out what's going to happen next. <laughs> what's going to happen next? Yeah. Isn't that great? Aren't we all looking forward to what's going to happen next? And uh, uh, we'll meet you uh, the next week with another uh, artist that I will be interviewing. In the meantime, if there are questions that I'm not asking and that you'd like me to ask, uh, please email me at, let me see, uh, F, I think it's at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, and I will respond. Um, in the meantime, we're, I'm Jane Trigere. This is the Deerfield Arts Bank in the center of South Deerfield Village. And thank you for being with us. See you next time.